Fourth round of the inaugural Rugby Gold Cup Championship live from Fort Worth, Texas. The fourth and final game of the competition. What a weekend it has been here to Boswell High School, just northwest of downtown Fort Worth, as you see the skyline there. It has been a wonderful day and looking forward to a great matchup. Our last match will feature the Austin Blacks and the Kansas City Blues. Should be a good one. Kit McConico. Grant Cole with you here on USARugbyTV.com, presented by T5RDG. These two teams saw each other back in November. It was a 30-26 to win for the Blacks over the Blues down in Austin. We take a look at the starting lineups for today's contest. And first for the Blacks, you see the forwards. A few changes from yesterday, but the captain, Ty Terrazone, back is the lock. Number five, Colleen McKay and Saunders, the flankers, and the number eight, Wesley Teo. This is Teo's second game with the Blacks. His first one was yesterday. He's been playing with Lone Star Rugby this year and got a successful waiver to come over to the Blacks. Now we take a look at the backs for the Blacks. You see Triplett, Jones, Sullivan, 272 points. No, that is not a mistake, folks. 272 points coming into this weekend for the inside center, Pat Sullivan, Levy Coretti, always a threat, is the outside center. Ricky Johnson will start at left wing, the speedster. Hamish Roberts, the fullback, and the right wing, getting his first start of the weekend, Antonio Wynn. And Antonio Wynn, a real standout from the CRC of 2015 for Indiana University. Hamish Roberts was a standout at Texas A&M, an All-American. And Zach Trifflett comes in as that Cal product that uh, just really – brings the X factor when it comes to rugby smarts on the field. The Blacks, they were the Division I National Championship runner-up last year. They won the Red River Championship as they booked their spot here in the inaugural Gold Cup Championship. We now take a look at the starting lineup for the Blues of Kansas City. KC, they were the champions from the Midwest Conference in 2015. There are the forwards, one through eight. You see Beckman, Hoover, Werken. Parkin Strudel will be a lock along with Schwartzy, Saunders the captain, and Elder the number eight for the Blues. Elder will be wearing 18. Parkin Strudel came on and played a strong final few minutes yesterday, and Schwartzy got a rest yesterday, and he'll be really ready to go today after yesterday's loss. And now the backs for Kansas City. Clark Mercer, the vice captain, Cummings, the inside center. Weber, Kendrick Scott, the left wing, speed for days. Beatty will be the right wing and the fullback, Big Ed Mills. Yeah, and Ed Mills is basically brings a lot of rugby smarts back there, long-time player, and really what Kansas City is going to have to do there is use their speed on the outside and try to beat Antonio Wynn or Ricky Johnson and get around the corner. And You look here, look at the depth on Austin's side. They really have got some strong players that started yesterday, can start on any D1 club in the country if they wanted to. And then on Kansas City side, one of the two of the people who came away yesterday real strong was Jaden Lang. He had a strong game once he came on yesterday. He really was a force to be reckoned with. And Martin Vander West using, he really had a quick pass from the scrum half position. Blues led by Marcus Volavalo, their head coach for the Blacks. Well, the man in charge, Tony Jurisovich. There are the Blues from Kansas City. And, well, not the weather they're accustomed to this time of year. Temperatures just about 80 degrees here in North Texas, a very big wind, up to gust up to 20 miles an hour going from left to right across the pitch. But this is a big opportunity for Kansas City. They need to get a victory today for Austin. Well, they have a chance with a victory to take home the inaugural Rugby Gold Cup Championship. Yeah, if, if Austin wins with a bonus point victory today, it's out of reach for everybody else. The Rugby Gold Cup belongs to them. Two of the better teams around. We're so pleased you could join us. USARugbyTV.com. We will have the opening kick in just a few moments. Live from Boswell High School. Pioneer Stadium. We originally slated to play this contest at Keller Sports Park, but due to the deluge of rain here in the Metroplex this past week, Boswell High School, nice enough to host us. And that being said, we really have to thank them. They have been absolutely wonderful especially the rugby club here, their coach, Mikey Patterson, the faculty sponsors of Melissa Baker and Julie Grutzka, the IT staff for the pioneers of David McCombs, Kirk Murdoch, and coach John Avensham. Moments away from the start, Austin in the black, as you might expect, Kansas City in the blue and white stripe. They'll be going from right to left and will have the opening kick. 
will the team from Kansas. And the referees in the center today is Scott Green with his ARs, Donnie Henrup, and Randy Campbell. They represent the Texas Referees, rug, the Rugby Referees Association, and know these Austin Blacks very well. Both these teams will be looking to get off to a hot start. Austin had a victory yesterday in their game over Metropolis, 38-14. to And for Kansas City, they, they fell to Dallas, 29-15. to Dallas had a 22-3 lead early in the second half, looking for a bounce-back performance today are the Blues. And we are underway, fourth and final game of the fourth round of the inaugural Rugby Gold Cup Championship. Blacks field the ball, and Grant, before we get going, your keys for both sides. Uh, Blacks are just going to have to play their game. Strong, straight-ahead ball. Uh, what they did yesterday, just it was, it was just phenomenal. They just played very, very steady in the, after that first try by... After that first, after their first try, they played very steady ball, and uh, they need to do that today. They're going to have to play that staunch defense against Kansas City if they come up with pressure. Seeing as Kansas City took a lot of standstill ball yesterday, I don't think Kansas City is going to have a good day for them if they can't find a way through the Black Beach wall. Beatty had it. Now quickly out it goes is the whistle. You saw that coming out of the hands of the scrum half, Austin Clark for Kansas City. And Green tagging. Levy Coretti for not releasing the tackle. Coretti, the Kiwi, grew up playing school boy rugby in New Zealand. He's a phenomenal talent. As that ball is into touch, over the head of Wynn it goes. Mentioned Wynn getting his first start. A lot of promise for the right wing for the Blacks with the number 14 on his back, and it will be a line out for the Blues. Coming over to take it is the hooker, Matt Hoover. Blues are going to have to make the most of this. Takes it short, does Hoover. His first scoring opportunity, you, if you get it, you got to take it from the Blacks because they're not going to give you a whole lot of these. Wheeling around, the mall ensues, now goes to ground, does the ruck. Quickly. Looking for Scott, the speedster. Now pushed back on the other side of the 22-meter line is Kansas City. Here to the near side, in and out of the hands of Saunders, the captain. Big collision, the Blacks defense standing strong for the time being. The Blues are tad impatient here, but they, it may prove to pay off for them if they keep driving. Going forward was Weber. Opportunity just meters away from dotting the first try down of the game. You see the Blacks defense closing. So good is that Austin side. One of the older programs founded back in 1967. Looking to get back to the Division I club championship final. The Blues have numbers on the Blacks on the outside, but they're just not moving the ball quick enough to take advantage of that. Stood up. Teo in on the tackle, one of the new additions for the Blacks. Just so hard to overcome at 260 pounds. You know, Wesley Teo is a beast in every sense, has speed, strength, size, and power, a great combination. Oh, that one in and out of the hands of Hoover, couldn't hold on to it, and all the way back to Beatty it goes. Beatty on his feet runs over a tackler, able to introduce himself to the, pro to the hooker Cleary. Not normal, you're going to see a, not every day you're going to see a fullback knock John Cleary down. And out of the hands there. Blues have done well to maintain this possession inside the Blacks territory, even though the Blacks are driving them backwards. Opening minutes of the game, no score, and there is Jones. Jones, the former Newcastle man, has great hands, offloads it. Triplet just had very keen eyes at that at that breakdown and got the ball out quickly to Jones. Nice 20 media pass out and Jones was able to. Back to the first oh. five eights, but his pass is picked off. Here come the Blues the other way. Will they not the first try of the game? Indeed they do dot it down. Jones's pass well read by Kansas City and that is exactly the start the Blues needed. And that certainly looks like Blake Beatty. 
not Blake Beatty, but uh, definitely not what Jones intended that pass to do. He was looking for Ricky Johnson. and One of the few mistakes we've seen this weekend from the Blacks. and Well, the Blacks, they got down yesterday as well in that game against Metropolis. They conceded the first try, much as they have today, but they were able to battle back an emphatic victory in that one for Austin hoping for something similar today. They ultimately came away with that 38 to 14 win. But right now trailing five to nothing and a chance with the conversion to make it seven for the Blues. That was James Clark, the flanker that stepped in and took that pass. Great work there from Clark. He read it perfectly. Clark, nothing but green grass in front of him, or I should say green turf in front of him here at Pioneer Field. No one was gonna catch him. Clark, the native of Kansas City, the former Lindenwood University player, was a junior Blues player before matriculating on to this senior side. And up and through, the conversion is good. A big thanks to all of our sponsors, Glass, Phillips, and Murray, Mosquito Knicks, Scott, Baylor Scott & White Sports Care, and Paps Blue Ribbon Beer, making this broadcast, this production possible. And, well, the Blacks... Not what they were anticipating is they're quickly down in the hole. But they weren't anticipating this either yesterday when Sean Kelly cherry picked a errant pass from uh, Comerford. You know, it's not exactly what they wanted, but look what happened yesterday after that. They turned it, they regrouped, they turned it on, and, you know, it was down the, down the road in a cloud of dust. Well, the Blacks without Brendan Rams, Chris Bowman, and Zach Mizell all out on pro contracts. So three big talents not at their disposal today for the side from Austin. But this team, they're very experienced, great leadership, and this will certainly uh, wake them up, and that may not be a good thing for Kansas City. Kansas City knocks on there and a take, and Ricky Johnson picks it up. Yeah, picked up by Reed, and then Johnson. Going forward is the big man, Sam Rooks. He is something else, is the tight head prop, led Division I men's club rugby in the state of Texas and scoring back in 2011. Back to Jones, over to Coretti, the Kiwi, over the 22-meter line. That was Ford out of the hands of Jonesy. So not the best start to this match for Steve Jones. We said the former Newcastle man. Very impressive resume, and now scrum towards Kansas City. And this will be interesting. You know, Kansas City's got pretty much a different front row in than they did yesterday with the exception of Beckman. And Blacks have the same front row starting today that they started yesterday. Yeah, Beckman, the loose head prop, now joined by the new additions, the hooker Hoover and the tight head prop Parkenstrudel. Parkenstrudel came on as a reserve, came on as a substitute in yesterday's game. Did not start. Joined in that tight five by Kevin Schwartzy and James Clark. My apologies, that tight head prop is uh, James Workin. I misspoke, and that is Park and Strudel, as you might expect, as the lock. Kelly Mercy's, Mercer's looking downfield, seeing if he can put it over the head, and he has overcooked that. Same thing we saw out of Trace Ballstead in his first kick downfield, looking for space. It was just a little deep. One thing you did note on there, I don't know if you saw how fast Antonio Wynn got down the field. If that ball would have stayed in touch, it probably wouldn't have had a good day. Wynn and Hamish Roberts were well in well in hand to uh, run it back. Yeah, when the fullback listed at 6'1", 180 pounds, is the 23-year-old originally from South Bend, Indiana. You mentioned his playing career there for the Hoosiers of Indiana University. That ball was taken back into the 22 and kicked out, so that was going to take it. That was out on the full and gave the Austin Blacks a nice line out inside the 22. This is not where the Blues want them to be attacking from. Big opportunity to draw level. There goes Big Rook. To the other side it goes, looking. That time it was in and out of the hands of Ricky Johnson. And Scott Green is going to call for his time because he wants to have a discussion with uh, Casey Blues player who 
almost took Ricky Johnson's head off there. Scott Green has a uh, pretty fantastic nickname for a referee. Yeah, some of the players in the Texas Rugby Union and the Red River Competitive Region call him the dealer. Hard to be a dealer when you only have two cards that you can show, but he, uh, he doesn't have a problem showing them. We saw that yesterday as he issued a few yellows. Jones will go ahead and send that into touch. Green is a uh, craftsman in the in the refereeing in the refereeing arena, though. He uh, really works hard on his fitness. Loves to stay right with the play, and you know you see him on Facebook all the time at Dave Rasco's gym in Austin. You know, working his butt off, and Rasco doesn't give him any quarter either. Going through and. Dotted down the try for the Blacks and a chance to draw even with the conversion. So just as quickly, Austin down, and now the chance to tie. And we, did you see who scored the first Austin try? Same as yesterday, Sam Rook. Well, the only Fight difference Texas was Aggie. yesterday, Rook, he had a splashdown for that try. As he, uh, <laughs> he did a wonderful belly flop in, and today didn't have that opportunity with his first try. We'll see if we see more of that from him later, but... Rook, he is absolutely something else. We talked about him at length yesterday. The big man, the Englishman. And you can't see it from here, but four or five of Rook's former teammates have come in to town. Or they, they live in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and they've come over here to watch him and Hamish Roberts play today. So he's got fans in the stands and uh, people watching online over in the U.K. And, you know, we want to we wanna make sure that they uh, <laughs> enjoy his – style of play. Well, Sullivan's conversion held up in the wind, didn't even go over the crossbar. One of the few times Sullivan has not been able to convert. He is fantastic. But you mentioned Sh Sam Rook, the try scorer. He is the 29-year-old native of Shrewsbury, England, listed at 6'3", or excuse me, listed at 6'2", 300 pounds even, maybe a uh, tad sh north of that. But he is a fantastic player. Know that he has a a lot of fans in attendance, a lot watching. Welcome all of you joining us on USARugbyTV.com, presented by T5RDG. So pleased to have you with us for this weekend. Final match of the fourth round here in the inaugural Rugby Gold Cup Championship, live from Fort Worth, Texas. Ty Terrazone, the uh, F-15 pilot, gets that ball there. squarely. Big Rook again gets it out. Black's going the other way, in and out of the hands of Sullivan. Sullivan still with it over the midfield strike. He's so hard to bring down. Now Jones. Back to Terrazone, the captain, the former Air Force pilot. Looking to get it back to Jones was win. Or excuse me, to Terrazone. You see Terrazone right there, just kind of trying to settle down the rookie. Clary's trying to get a one up there. It looks like it went into touch, but it came into touch off of Kendrick Scott's hand. So the line out to the Blacks, it'll be in the hands of the hooker Cleary. Reed and Terrazone in there. But taken short, oh, well done by the Blacks. Oh, the a rugby Seth Saunders had a good take, but referee Green says that there is an obstruction. And so unintentional obstruction is going to be a scrum to the Blues. Blues with that two point lead. Blacks unable to convert after the try. Now the Blues hoping to expand their lead. Clark, the scrum half, set to put it in. No, the Blacks looking like they might have the advantage, and out it comes. Clary takes one against the head there. Jones cuts it back through. Jones goes for a run. Now, into Teo. Three men to take him down. Quickly moving on to Sullivan. Great. Sullivan still moving forward. Quick move on to Coretti. Coretti offloads it to Cleary. Now back in. Terrazone. Thought about trying to split the wickets. Keeps it on the ground. Good idea with the wind in his face. Good defense from the Blues. Can they get a stop? 
Going forward, big read. Out it comes, Coretti with it. Triplet with it, working hard to keep that ball in possession and get it to his back line. Referee Green back, he sees something else. And this time he's going to go to his pocket. He's gonna have a chat with one of the Blues players. It looks like Matt Hoover. Yeah, the hooker Matt Hoover now headed to the sin bin. And pulling down the mall. That's a cynical penalty there. And the Blacks will have a man advantage and a chance to take the lead for the first time. And when the other team's hooker's down and you've got a, you've got a penalty five meters out, going for the scrum is a smart move. So Hoover over to the sin bin. We'll see if the Blacks can make something of this opportunity. The Blues are going to have to substitute a front row player in for one of their other forwards. Hoover, another one of those local products. Such good history of rugby there in Kansas City. Now the substitution coming on. Walt Elder is going to take a, actually that's a, yeah, Walt Elder is going to take a moment out and while this front row substitution comes in, can't, can't tell if that was Henry or F. Tink that came in for the Blues. Big opportunity for the Blacks. 16 minutes having elapsed in the first half. This could be Wesley Teo's first score for the Blacks. Austin trails seven to five. Out he goes into the hands of Teo, but quickly wrapped up. Teo, no room to get going. Heading forward was Mussy. Mussy, the loose head prop. Out he comes, now to read the big lock. Penalty advantage on for the Blacks. On to Jones. Jones cuts back. Oh, Jones oh, pulled down. Big penalty advantage there. And there That's it is. That's going to be penalty try awarded. So you saw the very high dangerous tackle. And an easy call there for our referee. And it looks like another card's going to come out to the Blues. The Blues already with Hoover in the sin bin, the hooker. And we'll see if there's a teammate set to join him. Indeed, there is. Working, Matt working now. The working the tight head prop. That's going over to. That's a tough ass. That's uh, two front rowers in the sim bin very early on in the game. So Workin gets the start today at tight head prop for Benami, who was the starter yesterday in the Blues game against the Reds of Dallas. Looks like Benami is going to get some early time on if we have another scrum in the next 10 minutes. Sullivan up and through it goes. It right into the teeth of the wind from Pat Sullivan. And it is a five point lead for the Blacks. 12 7, Austin on top of Kansas City. Again, another thanks to all of our sponsors. The fourth round of the inaugural Rugby Gold Cup competition featuring the best teams in the Red River Conference, best teams in the Midwest Conference. And for Austin and Dallas, they're right in the heart of their season. For Kansas City and Metropolis, for Minneapolis, Minnesota. Last time they played was back in November against these teams That's in correct. Gold Cup competition. Yeah, and, you know, it's still this Gold Cup competition has got one more game left on either side. Both, both Kansas City and Metropolis have another game to play, and Dallas and the Austin have another game to play. But if Austin wins this by, you know, by five but with a bonus point try, then it's not really going to matter. Those games are all going to be for pride Kansas and City. for standings in their conference. Kansas City will be at Metropolis Saturday the 23rd of April. Austin here in Dallas the following Saturday the 30th to wrap up the first year of this competition. It's back to live action we go and Zach Triplett bobbled that ball. There's a little miscommunication between him and Teo and Kendrick Scott was right there to pick it up but Kendrick Scott's hands betrayed him and he knocked it on as well so the first knock on is going to count and a scrum to the KC Blues and there comes Ben on. Well, you mentioned Scott. He is an absolute burner, is Kendrick Scott. But we didn't get to see that speed from him yesterday. Well, we didn't see it yesterday because he did have two knock-ons early on when he should have had the ball in hand and down the field. 
Now the scrum coming for the Blues. Opportunity for them to draw even with a try. The conversion would put them back up just outside the 22 meter line. Cummings with some meters, that's great. Yeah, Cummings, the inside center going forward now in the hands of Clark. Saw Cummings yesterday, he and Weber made a good combination, those two centers. You mentioned Lang in the pregame. He was fantastic. We'll have to see if he comes back in as a substitute. Green telling Sullivan to stay on side. Mercer now, drugged down by the Blacks. Terrazone making sure everyone in black is where they need to be. Ready, back on his feet. And Casey Blues are penalized for putting their hands into the ruck. So Jones into the wind, sends it into touch. Stephen Jones, the fly half from Northumberland, England. As you mentioned the Newcastle Falcon, 39 matches, 60 points in Scotland, five matches and 15 points. Yeah, all 15 of those points for Scotland A came in one match. It's a pretty impressive game there. Line out to the Blacks, moving quickly, back with Jones. Jones sidesteps, Jones to the top side. Triplet with the box kick. And he's got plenty of people there. That's what you want a box kick to look like. You gotta have plenty of followers. Sullivan, Johnson, and Coretti were all there. Fielded by Beatty for the Blues, just over midfield. Blacks with it, Terra zone. Scott unable to bring him down, finally does. He doesn't go down until Terra zone wants to go down. <laughs> and Scott's gonna get a penalize there for not releasing the tackle, looks like. Yeah, we mentioned Ty Terrazone, his very impressive resume as a former Air Force pilot. He was the Air Force men's captain. He was the D2 national champion back in 2006 with the Raleigh Vipers, native of Los Angeles, California. Green is not happy with the discipline at the breakdown by the Blues or the lack thereof. And he's definitely letting Lloyd Saunders know what he's seeing and what he wants to see. Two people in the bin. Green doesn't want to give out another card here. It's just too much of an advantage. The Blues are playing some spirited rugby. They just need to make sure they play it in, in, inside the law of the games. Yeah, Scott Green does a great job as the referee, really letting both teams know what he wants of them as we, again, thank Glass, Phillips, and Murray. They've been fantastic. One of our sponsors this week, one of our, our official sponsors, the law firm representing clients in business transactions, litigation, as well as family law, estate planning, bankruptcy, international or intellectual property, and tax planning. You can visit them at gpm-law.com. Glass, Phillips, and Murray, excellence with cost-effective results. Again, gpm-law.com. As the kick by the Blacks is into touch, they will have the line out. So the Blacks just, as usual, kind of humming along, everything going their way. They found their rhythm. It took a little bit of time, but if yesterday's win was any indication, they may well be on their way to taking home this trophy. Interesting that they haven't done, any, done anything with the two-man advantage over the last 10 minutes. They have not seized the opportunity. You think the team is veteran as the Austin Blacks being up two men, they would absolutely jump on it as Coretti finds himself with it, drugged down by two Blues tacklers. But Coretti's got support there quickly. And there's a side entry by KC, even though there's a knock on. And there's a card, there's a cynical side entry, and that's gonna be a third card. You just got warned, Lloyd Saunders. Three cards. Not yet, but he, he did go to his pocket. All to the Blues, and 
Well, wow. referee Scott Green electing not to pull it out that time, so I retract that. Two, two cards, both to the Blues. It did look like he was going to his pocket, though. As Jones sends that into touch. Right now, the Blacks calm, cool, and collected with a two-man advantage. Inch by inch, making their way, looking to dot another one down. Taking quickly, Terrazone with it. That was a bullet. He goes to ground quickly, and there's a black over the end goal line, but there was a knock on by the Blacks, scrum to the Blues. So the Blues dodge a bullet. They will have the scrum. 15 minutes remaining in the first half. Austin leads Kansas City 12 to seven. Here on USA Rugby TV.com presented by T5 RDG. Kit McConico, Grant Cole with you. So please, you could join us from wherever you Jones, may be. Jones is already telling Johnson and Roberts to back up. Definitely expect Mercer to put this as far downfield as he can. Awaiting the kick is Hamish Roberts, the fullback for the Blacks, along with Antonio Wynn, their right wing. Clark there. Blues did a good job trying to get that out of there quickly. Mercer dropped it, but he did get the kickoff. And there goes the kick all the way back into the hands of Roberts at the midfield stripe. Roberts now into Blues territory, leaves it off for Johnson. Johnson shakes, bakes over the 22-meter line, goes to left wing. It took Parkinstrudel with him for about 10 meters. Ball knocked away out of the hands of Triplett. Triplett unable to retain possession. Now the Blues sent over the top by Clark and into touch. Blues fortunate on that one. They were just behind the inside the 22 and Austin Clark with the chip kick goes, takes it to touch and gets a moment to slow down. Mercer bobbled the ball and lucky that he was able to come up with it as he sent it the other way over to Hamish Roberts. Looks like Henry's off and Hoover is back on. The Hoover back on as the hooker is Matt Hoover after his stint in the sin bin. Still down a man are the Blues. The Blacks really have yet to take advantage of that. They had a two-man advantage, now one. And You think a team as good as the Austin Blacks, they would jump on that, really exploit it, but they have yet to do so. I think in this game, the Blacks realized they would probably be the more fit team in the end. And they may be conserving their engines, just probing the line, seeing where Casey's got a, got a deficiency at. And once it comes time to turn the engine on and go full speed, it's Parker Strudel's down on his knee for some reason. The Parker Strudel down on the turf for the moment. And Grant, you mention this Austin team as we thank Baylor Scott and White Sports Care, our official health provider and sponsor. You can find them at baylorhealth.com slash sports care or simply by calling 1-800-4-BAYLOR. You said the Blacks, they're a team that really, they have great fitness. They pride themselves on that. They're a team that really likes to take control in that last 20 minutes from 60 to 80. That's when they show their ability. But they like to get out to the early lead so they can do just that. They do, they do like to get out there, but in cases like this where maybe they have a narrow field and they're a, narrow, a field more narrow than they're used to, they're not play, used to playing, they don't get to play that expansive game, maybe they're going to probe the defense, find out where the deficiencies are, and then hit it hard when it counts. Blacks hungrier than ever after narrowly falling to Nyack in the men's Division One championship final last year. They've been runners-up numerous times. They have yet to bring home that ultimate prize, hoping to do so, to take it back there to Burr Field in East Austin, a beautiful facility. See that black defense there was happy to let the Blues keep running with it a little bit, but they never gave any quarter, never gave them any gap to go through. Terrazone comes up with it for the Blacks, moving quickly, triple it out into the hands of Roberts. Roberts. Now on to Johnson. Brilliant little offload to Johnson. 
Johnson quickly, triplet, now into big lock, Eric Reed. Triplet moving quickly. He's getting that ball out in an instant. Now the Blues find themselves with it. The Blues tried to step through the post there, and they met Wesley Teo. That is an introduction you do not want to make. These two teams, they've been around for a long time. Blues founded in 1966. The Blacks just a year later in 1967. Teo's tackle there was judged to be a bit dangerous. And the Blues get a moment with the penalty kick. You mentioned all those players on the bench for the Blacks, including Matt Razovich, and what a performance it was yesterday from the former collegiate sprinter. I mean, Canute O'Donnell, the, uh, I mean, that's a phenomenal player there from Davenport University. He had a great career there at into touch goes the kick from the Blues, and we take the opportunity to remind you that, ladies and gentlemen, Boswell High School will be hosting the Best of the Southwest Youth Rugby Tournament coming up this June 11th and 12th right here at Boswell High School. They will have varsity boys, JV boys, varsity girls, middle school, fifth and sixth grade divisions, each capped at eight teams. So jump on board now. Register your site at dfwrugby.com for the best of the Southwest Youth Rugby Tournament hosted by Boswell Rugby. Right here at Pioneer Stadium in the adjoining fields, a beautiful facility here just north of Fort Worth as that goes the other way in the hands of Weber. Weber cuts it back, Johnson there, Johnson unable to bring him down and dotted down by the try. What a run by Cody Weber. You know, Cody Cummins really put Weber into space there. He didn't look like Sullivan was going to make the tackle. He did at the last minute right as Cummings was offloading. And that brought Coretti in and gave Weber the space to step through. And then after that, it was just all pace to the goal line. And it's 20 meters on that guy. You've got to hit him straight head on and stop him because if he gets a little pace on you, running him down like Cleary did is not going to stop five points. Yeah, Weber, the outside center, would not be caught. Saw nothing but fresh air in front of him as he took that one in. And now a chance to retake the lead for the Blues. Just over eight minutes remaining in the first half. Weber's been at this game for 11 years now. Came up through the Junior Jayhawks, Kansas Jayhawks rugby system, played in college, and now he's here at the Blues. He's, he's hometown boy back then. He also plays for Star Sevens, Liz in Twistle's side, that she puts together as a select side that goes traveling on tour to Australia, to Canada, and then to other tournaments around the nation. Mercer good on the conversion, and it is a two-point lead for Kansas City over Austin. Again, thanks to all of our sponsors making this broadcast and production possible. And right now, the Blacks not on the front foot, looking to find a little momentum. But credit Kansas City, they took the opening try. Austin came back, looked that it was going to be same old, same old for the Blacks. For Kansas City saying not so fast. We'll see if the Blues can add to their lead before half. Sent the other way. All the way back to Roberts. Roberts able to track it down eventually after the... And Roberts with a bobble there. <laughs> it's oh, so no. unfortunate. You know, it's little mistakes like that that have really hurt the Blacks today. And for the Blues to score with a man down, to be up like this, the Blacks are really going to have to stop making those little mental errors, those unforced errors that can really hurt you when you're playing a team that, you know, it has something to play for. They have a reason to beat you. Well, most of these teams used to playing on natural grass surfaces. You see the funny bounce that the synthetic turf here at Pioneer Stadium gives you, and that time just uh, difficult for Roberts is there will be a scrum to the Blues just yards away from adding to their two-point lead. I just don't advocate the waiting for the ball to bounce your way. You got to run onto it, get it any way it comes, maybe even kick it ahead and chase it if you got to. But that waiting for the for the ball to bounce your way is not ever going to work for you. Out it comes on the far side. Cummings with it. Cummings so close to that line. Now back near in the hands of work it, work it. Dots it down, a try for the Blues, and the mistake comes up to bite the Blacks. Roberts unable to field the kick, and the Blues take full advantage. Tate Arizona's going to have to take, bring his side together and 
get them on the straight and narrow. You know, working, he's a uh, Lindenwood University product, eight years in the game now, and uh, he, he really – he really knows when to turn it on, and right then was the moment he needed to turn it on and create some momentum for the Blues. We're five minutes from halftime, and Austin may not be able to get one up on the Blues before halftime, but that may not matter. Again, we got to get the Blues got to make a big enough difference to stop the Blacks in the second half. Well, it was only a four-point game when these two teams met back in November. Austin ultimately took the victory 30-26. to Maybe a little revenge on the mind of the KC Blues. As again, we thank Glass Phillips, Murray, Mosquito Knicks, Baylor, Scott, and White Sports Care. And, of course, Paps Blue Ribbon Beer, sponsors for this weekend. And what an event it has been. It has been beautiful. The weather yesterday, a bit overcast today, close to 80 degrees, not a cloud in the sky. But the Blacks on the back foot right now. Shell-shocked is the side from Austin. And credit Kansas City, they are taking control, looking to put more on the board before half, under five minutes remaining. Yeah, Walt Elder really got him tied up over there in the corner. A oh, little extracurriculars there after the whistle, and we've seen the chippiness from both sides. These two teams know each other, but wouldn't go so far as to say they like each other. Yeah, John Cleary definitely showed some restraint there. So Jones sends the kick into touch. The Blacks will have a line out and see if they can take the next scoring opportunity. Terrazone the dummy, back it goes, picked up by Cleary. That time Saunders putting people in the right spots. Bowling forward, Blacks over the 22 meter line now with it. Now they're gonna try and wear down that Kansas City defense with that pick and jam that they're well known for. Big Sam Rook heads forward, does the 300 pounder. Into the hands of Mussey, the loose head prop. On to Terrazone, the captain. Back to Rook. Takes a trio of Blues tacklers to bring him down. Mussey falls forward for a short gain. Still inching forward are the Blacks. That was Cleary. And that time, there's another card given to Parkinstrudel. So the third yellow of the match, all issued to the Kansas City Blues is Ian Parkinstrudel headed to the sin bin. And right now, if you're Kansas City and their head coach, Marcus Valovalo, you've got to be pleased with the way your team's playing, but the mental mistakes, the cards, really detrimental. Oh, the mental mistakes, the cards, I mean, they've been playing great ball. What could they have done without those cards on the field? And, you know, with work and making the try like that, that there's, there's a couple instances down there where they were punching in and, could have used work in the punch like that. Can the Blacks find points before a half? Just two minutes remaining. Again, referee Green, the official timekeeper. Blacks just meters away. Rook again. And Try there time, it Sam is. Rook. Big Sam Rook, as we said in 2011, he was the Texas Rugby Division I leading scorer, not for forwards, but for everyone. The big 6'2, 300 pounder from England. And he just has a knack for finding well, it. You know, his, his college coach, uh, Johnny Smith, says that he just knows where the ball is and knows what to do and when to turn it on. And, and that's just that, – that's what's really uh, wonderful about watching Rook play. You, <laughs> when you meet him, he's so nice and affable. And then when you see him out there playing, he doesn't play like that. <laughs> Sales manager and his day job is Rook. But when he gets on the pitch, he is a different beast altogether. And this is his third D1 club since college. He's played for the Harlequin, the Dallas Harlequins. He's played for the Chicago Lions, and he's played for the Austin Blacks now. So he's definitely playing his rugby at a higher level than normal. Sullivan's conversion up and through the goalposts. And what else would you expect from Pat Sullivan able to 
find that. Now cuts the lead to two for Austin, trailing 21-19 under a minute remaining in the first half here at Boswell High School, home of the Pioneers. Again, our thanks to all of them for having us on such short notice. Been a great weekend. Hard to believe this is our fourth and final match of the weekend. You sure we can't play two more tomorrow? I know, right? It's been so much fun. Now I know why Dallin Stanford smiles all the time. He gets to do this ad nauseum. Well, it's certainly been a blast from our point of view, and I hope the fans have enjoyed it as much as we've enjoyed bringing it to you. The Blues put it back into play, fielded by Teo. Now it's a big Sam Rook again, and he is just going to head forward, see how many Blues he can take with him. Jones. Puts a boot to it. That went over the head and eventually. And Mercer didn't get his hand on it the way he wanted to. And Mercer coming down with it, but <laughs> now Rook fields it. Now Rook some open space. Rook says, watch my best fullback impersonation. Uh, I think Hamish Roberts needs to tell Rook that that's, that, that's his position. Oh, Coretti now going forward. I think Roberts has had to tell Rook that a few times over the years. Jones, the baseball pass, he was looking for a win. That was the only pass he could make. He had one arm pinned to his side, did Stephen Jones. And that, that, the wind took that pass and overcooked it a little bit much. Wynn <laughs> when seems like he really wants that ball so he can show what he's got. He hasn't had the opportunity yet. Yeah, Wynn has not had many chances, has the former Indiana Hoosier. We know he has speed, listed at 6'1", 180 pounds, just 23 years of age. But so far, the ball is not found at number 14, as it will find Roberts here. Roberts wisely takes it, does not let it bounce again. He's made that mistake once, will not do it twice. And Clary's side entry there on Robert's tackle is whistled quickly. The time has expired. Again, our referee, Green, the official timekeeper. We'll see if there's time for either side to put more points by their name on the scoreboard as that is sent into touch by the Blues. And I don't know if Beatty realizes that time has expired. And looks like Randy Campbell's telling Scott Green, you might want to check your watch. Beatty, the right wing, so good. Reads the game so well. Now a line out to the Blues. Hoping they can come up with something. Wind at their back. They take the line out quickly. Into the hands of Mercer. Mercer on one further to Weber. Black's defense standing strong, and there is the whistle. No, that will not do it. I thought that was the halftime whistle, but we will play a bit more. That it will go against Austin. Conley McKay came in a little high on that tackle. Mercer had it wrapped up, and Mercer's going to get the call, but it was really McKay that came in high. The referee Green having a chat with both Cleary and the captain, Terrazone. And he doesn't want to hear Cleary's mouth in this one. Yeah, Terrazone did a wise thing there. He brought his... Hooker Cleary away. Here he had a Cleary had a few words, and that'll never come to anything good. Now an opportunity for Mercer. See if he can add another three points to his side before the halftime whistle. Kelly Mercer, the fly half, as we said, a native of Kansas City, Missouri. KC Junior Blues player before moving on to the Billikens of St. Louis. Wind swirling. Up and through. Good is the kick, the penalty kick for three, and there is the whistle for halftime. So Kansas City extends their lead to five, 24 to 19 over Austin at the break. 
and Mosquito Nicks is the Gold Cup sponsored by our friends at Mosquito Nicks, a national leader in mosquito control. Mosquito Nicks offers custom systems, ongoing treatments, and do-it-yourself solutions to eliminate flying, biting insects such as mosquitoes, fleas, flies, ticks, and more. Mosquito Nicks is protecting outdoor lifestyles anytime, anywhere, 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Find a location near you at MosquitoNicks.com or call 972-934-2000 for a free estimate and to learn more. You're watching the inaugural Rugby Gold Cup Championship here on USARugbyTV.com presented by T5RDG. Kit McConico, Grant Cole with you. And Grant, before we take a break for the half, your analysis of the first 40 minutes. The Blues, are gonna ha Blues have been playing with a lot of heart. Kit, and they're going to have to continue playing with that heart if they want to beat an Austin Blacks team. Austin is not going to come out of the second into the second half lightly. Uh, they will not go gently into any good night. They they go hard and fast every time. So the Blacks don't often find themselves down at the half. They have once this year, and the other team's mistakes were what helped them get on top again. And KC can't do that because the Blacks will – will really punish those mistakes. What I'd like to see is KC keeping that heart up. If they can keep that heart up, they can keep this game in flow and keep Austin in check. Austin right now is going to need to be getting back on their game plan. At the half, Austin trails Kansas City 24 to 19. We will take a break. Second half coming up next. Halftime, fourth round, final game of the round in the inaugural Rugby Gold Cup Championship, live from Boswell High School in Fort Worth. Kit McConico, Grant Cole with you. And before we get ready for the second half, a few words from our sponsors. Glass Phillips & Murray is a Dallas law firm providing a full range of legal services. Glass Phillips & Murray's lawyers represent 
clients in business transactions and litigation, as well as family law, estate planning, bankruptcy, intellectual property, and tax planning matters. Visit GPM's website at gpm-law.com. That's gpm-law.com. Glass Phillips and Murray. Excellence with cost-effective results. 40 minutes remaining. The Blacks trail the Blues at the half. 24-19 Kansas City on top of Austin. And Grant, this is not the performance we anticipated from the Blacks. If they were able to get a victory and the bonus point, they would be the inaugural rugby Gold Cup champions, but, well, that appears to be a ways off. I mean, definitely not what they want to play. Looks like they brought Matt Radzovich on for Antonio Wynn. Uh, and can't see that there's been a whole lot of other changes out there. Start of the second half, Jones puts it into play for the Blacks. Right now they need to get something going offensively. Credit Kansas City, they have been inspired Ready, wraps up Cummings there. Bowling forward, Jones in on the tackle. Tries to wrestle it away, but unable to do so. Quickly out it comes off the hand of Clark. On to Mercer. Lang now with it. Lang, so impressive yesterday. Expecting more of the same from him here. There's the whistle to the Blues. You saw both Reed and Teo. Teo is second game as a black. Hasn't been as influential as we might have expected. And he's still trying to get their systems down, learn who he's playing with. Really, the only person he, knew, he knows on the team real well is Levy Caretti. Into touch goes the kick. It will be a line out. On the far side for Kansas City. A beautiful day. Temperature just about 80 degrees. Wind gusts going from left to right across the screen up to 20 miles an hour. But not a cloud in the sky. What a difference a day makes. Originally slated to play this third and fourth round over at Keller Sports Park. But the deluge of wind and rain as Big Sam Rook goes over the midfield stripe and takes three or four blues with him. Wade Elder not, was not on the receiving end of not on the was on the receiving end of Sam Rook that time, and it wasn't very good. So we were forced to move from Keller Sports Park over here to Boswell High School. And that being said, a huge thanks to our hosts. They have been absolutely wonderful taking us on short notice. Have the pioneers, especially thankful to their rugby club coach. Mikey Patterson, the faculty sponsors, Melissa Baker, and Julie Grutzka, and everyone involved with the IT staff and the athletic department. So the first scrum of the second half will be for the Blues, just on their side of midfield. And that wheels around and it's a Free kick to Kansas City for that wheel. So in the hands of the scrum half, Clark, and he sends it back. We've seen some big collisions. A lot of forwards carrying the ball today. Walt Felder there. It's only in his fourth year play and he's out of Kansas State, but he's really been a go-getter around the pitch today. Oh, Kelly Mercer found a gap. Mercer, the speedster. He's got room. Help. He leaves it off into the hands of Weber. It goes, but pulled down. Coretti saves that try from Weber, but at the still line, the Blues stopped. Yeah, great tackle there from Coretti. Blues have yet to get it over, and there's a whistle. So a little pushing and shoving afterwards, and that is Kendrick Scott for the Blues. I believe that was John Cleary for the Blacks. Cleary, uh, it's not the first time these two have got together in this game. Those, those two have had a pretty, pretty interesting conversation that's been ongoing from early in the first half. Cleary, he's taken exception to a few things today. Now Scott headed over to the sidelines. It looks like he will be substituted off. No, he's just going to head back. My apologies. There is someone for the Blues set to check in at the scorer's table on the far side. That's Parkinson. Still in the bin. 
Parkinson should have warm enough. He wants to come out. He will not be released early. Still a man advantage for the Blacks. At one point, they had a two-man advantage in the first half. As Jones, little shake and bake, sends that one into touch. Nudo Should. Donald's come in for, for Zach Triplett at the half, too. So they've two changes for the Blacks at the half. You know, Coretti did really showed some heart on that rundown of Weber. Weber had a sure try there. Thought he had a sure try until Coretti jumped on his back and took him down. Yeah, great work there from Coretti. Hustling back, did the outside center, saved a try. And if you've been watching Levy Coretti for any amount of time in Texas rugby, you know that's just what to expect from him. Yeah, Coretti is pretty fantastic in all aspects as the Blacks find themselves with it. That pass behind Jones and that was Stain Bernard coming on strong. Kelly Mercer didn't want a piece of that. Yeah, Stain Bernard, the South African now. The other way in the hands of Sullivan. Sullivan looking to offload it to Coretti. Back behind him it goes. Weber had it initially and then Clark, but the whistle blew. And Clark knocked it on trying to pick it up. And it's a good run by Blacks there. And Rook with a nice little offload in the run while running and finding Sullivan. Sullivan takes it downfield, puts the Blacks inside the Blues into the field and this is kind of where the blacks want to be this is where they attack from where they where they excel from and they brought stein Bernard in for Connolly mckay now and we should see some fresh legs out of Bernard. Bernard is generally fresh for 80 minutes but coming in for only 40 he's going to be exceptionally fresh blacks with the scrum we've already seen the try scoring ability of the tight head prop, Sam Rook. Now you saw the passing ability there. Pretty impressive hands for a man of his size. Sullivan through, Sullivan over to the far side. But what a tackle. The That's Blacks it. just shy. That's the Blacks' danger man, Matt Rad, Matt Radzovich. Radzovich did not get the start in the first half. Comes on here in the second half. Does the former collegiate sprinter, Radzovich. Always dangerous in space. Stain Vinod really with a quick reaction to the turnover there, noticing that he didn't have a back three to protect for a kick. Got back quickly, and even though it, all of his uh, wings and fullbacks were into the tackle situation, that was good thinking on Vinod's part. That's uh, the kind of thinking that will protect a team like the Blacks from a small mental error or a lucky moment on the Blues part. Line out for Austin in the hands of Cleary. Quickly, but unable to come down with it were the Blacks. Now the Blues with it. Deep in their own end. On to Lang, Lang cuts it back. Mercer. In to touch it goes. Kelly Mercer has been very impressive today for Kansas City. Uh, he's been cool under pressure, and he's been under pressure quite a bit today. And that's the kind of cool under pressure he's going to need if he wants to beat the Blacks. Another line out to Austin. See Terrazone, the captain in there, always a target, along with Saunders. I like to go short into the hands of Saunders it goes. Too far for Johnson, picked up by Teo. Teo bowls forward near the 22 meter line. Proving a handful for the Blues, Teo is, but they get the ball back. Now on the far side, the speedster, Scott. Still on his feet, eventually pulled down. Quickly, out it comes the Blues, looking to take advantage, getting that Blacks defense maybe a bit offset. Eventually going to ground, Blacks retain possession. Out it comes. Not releasing the tackle. I said earlier that it looked like Benad had come in from McKay, but 
actually it looks like Bernard came in for Reed and they just did some switch arounds, moved Teo to lock and McKay to eight man. Yeah, so Teo now in that second row along with the captain Ty Terrazone as the Blacks send that one in to touch. They will have a line out. Now the Blacks starting to find their rhythm, starting to get to the Austin side we know, but still trailing 24-19, just over 30 minutes remaining in the match. The Blacks need to do something with this possession inside the red zone of the Blues. It's, it's going to be very important for them to put five points on the board here. And then slot another two. Cleary, the native of Limerick, Ireland. Played his college ball there for Cork over on the Emerald Isle. Out it goes to number two. The hooker headed forward. Blacks, Terrazone with it. Sensing an opportunity and they want to take advantage. And the captain was there and Rook took the ball for the picket jam. Teo, just shy of the line. Still there, it is a war of attrition. And Rook will come again. up victorious. And big Sam Rook able to dot it down. And who else? Sam Rook. In that situation, that's the guy you're going to give it to. It's kind of like fourth and one in football. Give I, it to your fullback. Give it to the 300-pound Sam Rook. I don't think anybody had a choice. Rook reached in, grabbed the ball, and just dotted it over. <laughs> well, Sam Rook never shy about taking control. He did so right there. Another try for the tight head prop, Sam Rook. Now the Blacks have drawn even at 24, a chance to take the lead with the conversion. And Sullivan in a place he wants to be at. This is Sullivan you think could make this in his sleep. As we mentioned, 272 points scored coming into this weekend. That and total has not been updated, everything he scored yesterday and today. And his, his right leg is a veritable howitzer. You think about Sullivan, something you and I spoke of. Generally, it's your one of your halfbacks taking those kicks. Sullivan, just a mass of a man, so much bigger than you would anticipate. Listed at 6'4", 230 pounds is the former Arkansas State product. And he played fly half at Arkansas State, you know, and, and which was a great position for him there. He was a kicking leader there as well. Moving him to center in a men's game is, is that's perfectly understandable when you've got a guy like Steven Jones or even the Zach Mizell at fly, to play at fly half. When you're that deep and you've got somebody that big and defensively that strong, you put Sullivan at inside center and he can be your second fly half when your fly half's in the breakdown. It's, it's an easy choice to make for a coach. Again, thanks to all of our sponsors. We thank all of you joining us. Hope you are having a wonderful Sunday. It is a beautiful day here in North Texas and We've had a rugby match up to par with the weather fielded on the far side. That was Weber that time. Weber took a quick in for, into Beatty, and Beatty's actually makes some meters out of it. Beatty heading forward. Beatty back on his feet. Beatty, a wonderful job here. And see if the Blues can get something going. The pass off the mark. They were looking for Parkinstrudel, and he comes down with it eventually. Yeah, I had, uh, I guess it's Vander West using it, 23, got that ball on the run. He had, he had the gap and the angle. Out he goes into the hands of Mercer. Mercer quickly sending it to the far side. That is headed forward was the pass. And it came off of Radzovich's hand into touch. The last touch by Matt Razovich, Matt Rad as he is known. The native of Austin, Texas, one of the few local products. Talk about the speed earlier of Johnny Moore. Matt Rad himself was a sprinter and wide receiver at the University of Louisiana Monroe as a collegiate player. Taken along, found Saunders, the captain. But that, that throw in was not straight at all. Yeah, the wind may have played a factor, but either way, that was well on the side of the Blues. And when you have the throw-in in the line out, it has to go down the middle. That is one of the rules. You cannot have interference between the jumpers. Yeah, the law states clearly that you must throw the ball down the middle of the line out. 
Now scrummage for the Blacks. Blues were boring in a little bit from the right, from the right side there. That looks like Ben Hami coming in at an angle and free kick to the Blacks. The Blacks with that two-point lead after the last try and the conversion by Sullivan. And starting to really exert their will in this game. You're starting to see that Austin Blacks brand of rugby just taking control, dictating the play, the pace of play. But the Blues, they've been impressive. Question is, do they have enough left in the tank with just over 25 minutes remaining? Expect the Blacks will be start to be replacing their front row here in the next five to 10 minutes. And Tip back to Cleary was the line out. O'Donnell clears that away over the top into the hands of Weber. Weber makes meters, heads forward, pass. Knocked on by the Blues and now the Blacks have possession. Though. Now Terrazone into space. He was looking for Johnson. Johnson able to track it down, keeps a foot off the sideline. Ricky Johnson, the left wing, back towards the center. Advantage was on for the knock on, but Scott Green is going to go talk to Donnie Hendrup. He, see, he saw a dangerous tackle there. He wants to have a chat for a moment with Lloyd Saunders and his bunch. So opportunity for both sides to catch their breath. You see the captain. The lock number five tight terror zone for Austin. And now having a chat with Mercer is Scott Green. Also brought in the captain Lloyd Saunders, made sure that he was abreast of everything he was saying. Uh, it's not a dangerous tackle. He called that a side entry. So Jones. Kicks it into touch. The Blacks looking to add to their two-point lead and inching closer to doing so. I thought Mercer having committed a high tackle was a bit of a tough ass being. He's not, it's not quite as, uh, as tall as the ones you would expect to be calling dangerous on. Yeah, Mercer's kept things by the book. Only listed at 5'10 is the fly half. Hard to make a dangerous tackle when the person you're tackling is four or five inches taller. Elder taking advantage of a Blacks unforced error there, knocked on in the line out throw. Back to Weber, O'Donnell with it. Blacks not rolling away at the tackle. We've seen that a few times today. Teams making the tackle, not rolling away. Teams being tackled, not releasing the ball immediately. Into touch goes the kick from Mercer. 22 and a half minutes remaining. Austin leading by the slimmest of margins and only two points. And Johnson's off. David, they call him Candace Comerford. Not sure why Ty Terrazone has chosen that nickname for him, but it's David Comerford comes on. Comerford, the 36-year-old, the native of Austin, Texas, went to the University of Texas. When asked uh, about himself, I love Comerford's quote. He says, I don't know how to put this, but I'm kind of a big deal. People may know me. I'm very important. I have many leather-bound books and my apartment smells of rich mahogany, obviously, that uh, from a famous movie that we will not quote for copyright infringement. But you, you got to love the sense of humor in these guys. They are on the field. They are the consummate competitors. It is a hundred miles a minute. They're giving everything they have off the pitch. They're some of the nicest guys you'll ever run yeah, into. Yeah. The line out to the Blues on the far side. Austin getting some fresh legs on. We'll see if that... Helps them, and that is won by Kansas City.
Kansas City trying to get a little momentum going their way. Oh, nice touch off the boot. That time from Mercer. Mercer kind of popped that up to himself. Ready with the ball smarts there and just instantly knowing where the ball was. Jones to the far oh, side. Oh, he overcooked that just a tad. That one just a meter inside the 22 meter line. It looked like Jones had it placed perfectly. The wind may have played a factor in that kick. Jones unhappy with himself and a turnover to the Blues. He was so trying to finesse that one in, in the field of play. Yeah, the kicking game of Steven Jones is something to really take note of. Again, the second match in today's fourth round. Had two yesterday. And our competitors from our earlier match, Metropolis and Dallas Reds in attendance, looking on as they watch this. Dallas Reds took the victory over Metropolis. Hoover not quite given us the best uh, throw-ins that he's started with. And Mills on the field now. Mills on the field, some blacks up and warming up. Among them, Bradley Yandel, your former Devil Dog buddy. Yeah. Bradley Yandel. Like I said, about five, 10 minutes, I'll start replacing that front row. Just under 20 minutes remaining and fatigue starting to show on both sides. So Donald out to Jones, Jones with it. Jones thought about the dummy, Coretti was there, but stays with Jones. Jones gains meters the hard way. To Terrazone now, Terrazone. Ducks his head, goes forward, three yards in a cloud of dust for the captain, for the Blacks. Now on to Mussey. Good phases here from the Blacks, moving quickly. Jones, oh, the big man, Sam Rook, through a trio of Blues defenders. Out to Jones yet again, Coretti now. Oh, great tackle. Coretti had some space in front of him had it not been for that tackle. The Blacks playing a, a strong support game here, always with their man. not realizing that O'Donnell was in the breakdown at that point. And O'Donnell now finds himself with it on to Jones. Jones cuts back up the pitch over the 22 meter line. It goes Jones, the Scotsman. Back to Terrazone. Terrazone looked to sidestep the defender, but unable to get away. Cleary now. Cleary ducks under the tackle. Brilliant play there by Cleary. Terrazone got a hand to it, can't come up with it, and now to the Blues it goes. Again, those mental errors that you've just got to be so careful about. Blues going the other way. Ed Mills. Big he Ed Mills. So dangerous. Ed Mills to right wing. Hamish Roberts slows him down, but Hamish is not going to be enough to stop him. Back inside it goes, spinning away. Thought about the kick, but... Beatty brings it down in space. The little grubber kick. That's touching goal. We're gonna have scrum back at the kick. Nope. Penalty advantage was on to the Blues. So the Blues had the penalty advantage. You gotta like the idea there. The grubber kick just a bit too far. But the Blues, they will retain possession. And with the win, this isn't gonna be in Mercer's uh, the wind going from points range right to left across the face of I should say from the near side to the far side of those of you watching at home and wisely put into touch Oppor not an opportunity there to put the kick on So the Blues, a line out deep in the Blacks' end. The war field position of recent, both teams switching sides. Now the Blues hoping to retake the lead. Down by two is Kansas City. And that chip kick. Oh. Blacks unable to come down with it. Cleary got a boot to it, but nothing more, and eventually ends up with the Blacks. Knocked on by Weber there. And 
Back to Jones. Jones feigned the kick and went over the 22 meter line. Offsides by Blues at the breakdown. See the Blacks captain Ty Terrazone hands on head right now. Everyone out there sucking air. You've got to think for Austin in the middle of their season, a, an advantage in fitness as that goes over the head of Weber into that, touch. That's one of Jones's best kicks all weekend. That was on the money from about 60 yards away from Stephen Jones. A switch of field now for the Blacks. And that's something Jones has done quite a few times this weekend is get them into better field position with this kicking, especially from the penalty kick. And again, the blacks are back where they want to be inside the blues field, into the field, and uh, they got to do something with it now. Terrazone takes the line out and barges forward. Austin with it. Moving forward are the blacks. Now Jones, and the dummy, Jones dots it down. What a fake by Jones. The Blues bit, and Jones right in for five. And he, Ed Jones used that number, that, that ball, to create that space so brilliantly. He's just dummied out. He had plenty of numbers outside. He could have made the pass, made it work. But once he sold the dummy, the defense outside wasn't sold on him, and he stepped through the gap and was in. Stephen Jones, the Scotsman, former Newcastle Falcon, we talked at nauseum about his kicking ability, and that time gets it done on the ground. The great dummy, the Blues defense, went with the pass that never came, and Jones takes it in for five. Austin with an opportunity to take a commanding lead now, just over 14 minutes remaining, and a chance to go up nine on Kansas City. Sullivan is almost automatic from here. We'll see if he can add another two to the Blacks' points total. Up and through it goes. Pat Sullivan, two more for the Austin Blacks. 33-24, Austin over Kansas City. Just under 14 minutes remaining as we thank our sponsors yet again for the great job and all of their support. And it wasn't a few minutes ago that the Blacks were down by nine points and it's turned around very quickly. The Blacks have put 21 points on the board in a hurry and now it's their turn to turn on the speed and play their game. Grant Cole, Kit McConaughey with you here on USARugbyTV.com presented by T5RDG. And Grant, one thing you and I wondered was would the fitness level of Kansas City hold up in the heat, humidity, having not played a competitive match since the middle of November and now backs against the wall for the boys in blue. And Casey has proved pretty fit. Matt Rad knocks it on. Oh, Razovic unable to come down with it cleanly. There's the knock on call. I think this is the longest Razovic has been in a game this year and not have scored a point yet. This is not something the Blacks fans are accustomed to. <laughs> Usually when Razovic finds the ball in space. He's away. He is nothing but air and grass in front of him and he's just going to dot it down for five but a bit frustrating for Matt Razovic the wing oh he'll find his pace here in a minute oh there's plenty of time shoot there's enough time for Razovic to find two three or maybe even four tries who knows scrum to Kansas City there are plenty of people in Austin saying shh don't bump the bump Welcome all of the Blacks fans there. I know they have a watch party out at Burr Field. Again, so pleased you could join us. Such a great facility. I've had the opportunity to go out there a few times and always a treat. Likewise, we welcome all the fans from Kansas City. And I know they are eagerly watching their side, hoping that they can get back into this. And they certainly can. I mean, this is not over by any stretch of the imagination. Austin Clark didn't release the ball quickly enough there when he was tackled. Scott Green, our referee, has done a wonderful job this afternoon. And the Blacks, they will make another change, and I believe that is Diego Sotelo Hirala, the oh. native of Asuncion, Paraguay. That's not a change. Sotelo's bringing out the T for Sullivan. 
So Sotelo comes on for the first time, solely to bring the tee out for Sullivan, and now heading back to the sideline is Sotelo. So Sullivan, our longest kick maybe of the competition. 55 yards out. If anyone can hit it, you've got to assume that Pat Sullivan would be able to. And a big three points on the line. Sullivan, a low driving kick, and that is short by about 10 meters. Didn't get his foot under it the way he'd want to, but it's going to be a 22 meter drop to the Blues since it went touching goal. Sullivan not happy with that, expected better of himself. O'Donnell fields it. Pressing forward, Comerford. O'Donnell back to Big Sam Rook who bullies through. On his feet is Rook still going forward. But Rook was uh, obstructed by Levy Car Caretti there and both Caretti and Rook were trying to go through at the same time. And yeah, Caretti knew exactly what he did when he committed it. Gets a pat on the back of the head from Wesley Teo, but uh, I don't know if that's going to be. I don't think be. that's what he saw. I think it uh, looks like Scott Green saw a knock on by the Blacks, and so he's going to a scrum. Indeed, it will be a scrum for KC. A little less than 10 minutes in this one. Perhaps he judged the uh, pass from O'Donnell to Rook to be forward. being corrected by my technical advisor is accidental obstructions because of the scrum. Nice to have the TMO, isn't it? Early release by the Blacks. So Clark Not sure what waiting to put it back in. Now both scrums setting. O'Donnell trying to keep the energy on his side up. Right now it's about digging deep what is left in the tank. Came out to Clark, then on the far side, Big Mills, Mills, his pass. Over to Weber, Weber over midfield. Weber's wrapped up well. Not before he gets a bunch of meters, though. Back. Ben Hami. Ben Hami now, after Mills got a touch to it. Blacks find themselves with a little grubber kick over the top, and here come the Blacks in chase. Stain Benad, he saw some face. And Benad, eyes for the ball, almost got a hand on it. And, he's, and he knew he had Matt Rad out to his right, kicked the head, and let's get the chase down. That, Created a mental error on the blue side and now a bobble. Ch changes coming for both teams. Among them, Bradley Yandel has said he would be coming on, and there is a black down in the center circle. That's Sam Rook. Looks like he's the big Sam Rook. He's have to be stretched out. His right hamstring a bit tight. You can imagine as much running as he's done today. He's done quite a bit. <laughs> he's been up and down the pitch as we again thank our sponsor Baylor Scott and White Health. 30 hospitals in the state, customized treatment plans for you, and you can connect with them at baylorhealth.com slash sportscare, or give them a shout if you prefer, 1-800-4-BAYLOR. So the Blacks taking the opportunity to get a drink of water, and a well-deserved drink of water. Rook back on his feet as the captain coming over and you never know what the uh, captain's duties are going to consist of. Mark Brewerton comes on for Troy Mussey. And Yandel on for Johnny Cleary. So Brewerton, the Kiwi, the, the big loose head prop at 44 years young. On for the Blacks for the remaining 645 of this match. One of the elder statesmen in the competition. Out it goes to Jones. Jones on to Coretti. Coretti met by two tacklers. Ball on the turf. The Blacks retain possession. 
knocked on in the tackle by Coretti, lost forward. McDonald jumping on top of it, tried to keep it, but as you said, the knock on. And it will be another scrum for Kansas City. The coverage game has been pretty even. Both teams have had their successes. I have to say that if uh, Rams or Bauman and or Bauman were here this weekend, we probably have seen a much different scrummaging out of the Blacks. Yeah, the, as you mentioned, the Blacks without Brendan Rams, Chris Bauman, and Zach Mizell all the way on pro contracts. So opportunity for some youngsters to see their first action, among them Wesley Teo, who got the start today for Austin. Out to the far side, Weber comes up with it. Great work from him. That was over the head of Mills. Freddie wasn't letting him through, though. Freddie is a sure tackler. He is a force. Offensively and defensively is Levy Coretti. But he's so strong when you when he gets his arms around you, it's gonna be so hard to get out of his grasp. Penalty advantage on for the blacks. And there is Wesley Teo. Teo dots it down and Teo, his first start for the Blacks, comes up with a try, and you see the arms raised on the Austin side. They know that that may well be enough to get them to victory. And Teo really Shows a lot of promise. He showed a lot of promise playing D3 ball in Texas and coming over to the Blacks. You know, he rooms up with Levy Coretti now and works with him. And coming over to the Blacks, Teo is really a bright spot for them. So Teo dots it down, busts through for the five. Now the conversion coming for Sullivan as Reed will oblige him and bring the T out. But with just over four minutes remaining, Austin a chance to make it a 16 point lead. It was a slow start for the Blacks as it was yesterday, but they did come up with a victory yesterday and hoping for one today as well. And they've got the bonus point try now. So, so if the Blacks are indeed victorious, they will be your first ever Rugby Gold Cup champions. This is the inaugural season of this competition, pitting the Red River and Midwest as the flags are raised, the conversion true. And the Blacks just three minutes, 45 seconds away from a championship. Another trophy added to that expansive trophy case down in Austin. And this is what you expected of the Blacks, putting on the gas in the second half and really just putting the spikes to the blues and making them feel the pressure down in their end of the field and creating their scoring opportunities. Well, the fitness level of the Blacks as we anticipated, the highest of levels. They knew that they would really try to make their mark in that last 20 minutes, and they've done just that for the Blues. You've got to be impressed with a team that hasn't played competitively since the middle of November. The heat and humidity not taking as big of a toll as we thought. Kansas City looking very good today, but just too much Austin. Nude O'Donnell put too much on that one. Out on the full giving the Blues a line out. Austin will be looking to make their way back to the championship final where they fell last year to Nyack. But a lot of depth on the black side. You might expect those division one, two, and three rosters as Teo looking to pick up ahead of steam, but the whistle doesn't give him the opportunity. Quickly restarted, Blues. Time, and just as I say that, the Blacks find themselves back with it. Yandel now, his first touch. Yandel definitely likes to make an impression and make an impact when he comes on in the half. Over to Jones. Oh, Jones looked to drop it back. Eventually picked up by Roberts. Roberts and Weber. Getting into it in touch there a little bit. Now Terra Zone. Jones dropped it off for Comerford. Back to Jones. And little squib over the top into touch. Ty Henry got a hand on that before it went to touch. So 
for the Blacks. And the Blues on the far side, a line out coming for Kansas City. Tapped back. Able to escape one tackle. Heading forward, Beatty. Now on to Mills. Lang. The Blues had numbers out there and did not use it. Lang has been noticeably absent here in the second half. We saw his ability yesterday. That was Ford. Saunders, the captain, unhappy. His pass ruled to be a forward pass, as you well said. A few of the blacks with one eye on the clock, the other on the pitch. That forward pass by the Blues did not give them the advantage and some infraction by the Blacks was given to them and the Blues have, have the line out throw in in the Blacks into the field now. Still pressing, but it's right here in the closing minutes of the match. Time has expired, the 80 minutes has elapsed, but again, as always, the official timekeeper is our official. Mr. Green, the only one who knows how much time exactly is left and all the Blacks in their faithful waiting for him to blow the whistle, signaling that they have won and have won the inaugural Rugby Gold Cup Championship with that victory. Blues continuing to press. They have yet to give up. Not sure they know or even care how much time is left and how far behind they are. I think you're exactly right. This is a team that means makes little difference to them. They are just trying to put some more points on the scoreboard. Yandel tried to strip it away. Jesse Adams in now for Rook. The big Jesse Adams now on for the first time. The tight head prop, former Angelo State man. And a little pushing and shoving afterwards and some extracurricular activities. Somebody needs to tell Austin Clark who he's messing with down there. Yeah, Ty Terrazone is saying, if you want to continue this, I'll be happy to. So Teo back on his feet. A little chiropractor going down there in the field. <laughs> yeah, being helped out by a teammate. You got to like that. Teo may have dislocated his left shoulder. Uh, he and put it back in. Right typical to rugby fashion. Yeah. No reason to go to the sideline. No reason to find a trainer. Just, hey, I, I can do that for you. All right, good to go. On we go as O'Donnell sends the kick into touch. And that's the game, folks. And there is the game, the final Austin 40, Kansas City 24. And with that victory, the Blacks are your inaugural Gold Cup champions. Congratulations to the Austin Blacks. Yeah, the Austin's got to be very happy with this. Uh, get, a, get a trophy on their shelf in, in this inaugural year playing teams from out of their conference, getting some experience that they may or may not see in the regular course of the year, but they're definitely going to have to look at when they go into the playoffs. And that's that's what this competition is all about, is being able to play some teams in the middle of the year that you may have to see down the road in the playoffs and know what you've got to do to get better. A phenomenal weekend. And again, our thanks to the host at Boswell High School and their rugby club. We remind you one last time that they are going to have a tournament Best of the Southwest Youth Rugby Tournament this January, or just June 11th and 12th. You can find information or register at dfwrugby.com. What a weekend it has been. We thank you for joining us. It has been absolutely fantastic. But before we go, your analysis of this final match, Grant. Well, it, it was what it was. The Blues came on strong in the first half and played their hearts out, but that was just about all they had. They, they just didn't have any more gas in the tank when it came to the second half. And the Blacks had played a little conservative in the first half, maybe not as strong as they could have. And then the second half, they came on strong, really punched it forward. Uh, tries by, by Sam Rook, tries by uh, Stephen Jones really were important there in the second half and putting them ahead and 
putting this game away for the Blacks, and th and that's really that's really what counted for the Blacks is they put the game away. Austin opened up the tournament with a 38 to 14 victory over Metropolis yesterday. Dallas took a 29 to 15 victory over the KC Blues. Today, Dallas 36-34 over Metropolis, and Austin ultimately 40-24, to the victors over KC Blues. One last time, a special thanks to all of our sponsors. You see them right there, Glass, Phillips, and Murray, Mosquito Knicks, Baylor Scott in a white sports care, and Paps Blue Ribbon Beer. Without them, we would not be able to do this. Thank you to all of our viewers watching on YouTube and USARugbyTV.com. It has been our pleasure to bring you this. From everyone at our production company, special thanks to our cameramen, Kyle Palm and Mitch Curtis. They have been wonderful. As always, thanks to well, our crew here of Craig Coates, Johnny Smith. For Grant Cole, I'm Kit McConaughey. We remind you to stick with us. We will have our post-game interviews coming up next. The final, Blacks over the Blues, 40-24. to Austin Blacks are your inaugural Rugby Gold Cup champions. Congratulations to the side from Austin.
Rugby Gold Cup Championship with the head coach of the KC Blues, Marcus Valavalo, their captain, Lloyd Saunders. And Lloyd, first to you, talk to us about this match. Your team played very well, especially considering the hot and humid conditions. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite hard to swallow at the moment. I thought we we were winning at one point, so we were pulling in a, like a good good first half and silly mistakes and discipline sort of let us down a little bit. And then obviously at the end, just the heat and second game of the, of the year, just you sort of tailed and tailed over mid-season and they just come out um, a lot stronger than us at the end, so yeah. Uh. Coach Lloyd mentioned this is your second match in just about 24 hours, your yeah. first competitive match in almost six months. Yeah. How proud are you of the way your squad performed? Super proud, super proud. Nobody can fault the effort out there. We were brave. Um, at times we weren't smart. But uh, when we come out here and play in these kinds of games against the, some of the best domestic clubs in the country, all of Kansas City is behind us. Uh, all the people who follow rugby in Kansas City really want this Kansas City Blues team to do well. And we've got a lot of local guys who make up the, a big majority of our squad. So we're building something special here. And we're excited about what's le what lays ahead for us. It's unfortunate we didn't get the result today. And that's a very good Austin side. We can't take any anything away from them. We were up by five at one stage. and. Um, we just have to be able to keep our head and limit the mistakes and be able to finish a job. So I'm, I'm proud of the way my guys played and uh, the good thing about rugby is there's always more rugby around the corner and the next weekend we go to Ohio and do it all over again. So. Coach, you mentioned the great fans in Kansas City. There's a wonderful tradition of rugby in Kansas City, very well known here in the U.S. What do you take away from these two matches here in North Texas? It means to me and it means to the club that they're starting to take it seriously. Um, all the focus seems to be on the uh, PRP and the ARP, and that's to be expected. But Austin, Dallas, us, Metro, uh, we're not here to make up the numbers. We, we, we want to be a force to be reckoned with moving forward. And Mr. Frank Mirakatani and the rest of the old boy network are, gi are giving us every opportunity here in our Jubilee year, our 50th year, to be able to... Uh, we didn't come away with the victory today, but now we roll right into defending our uh, Midwest Championship and then hopefully the Nationals. and and win our first uh, national championship since the club's been around. So. Kansas City Blues head coach Marcos Valo Valo, their captain, Lloyd Saunders. We thank you both for your time. Congratulations and best of luck the rest of the season. Continuing our post-game wrap-up here with the champion, the captain of the Austin Blacks, and their head coach, Tony Jurisovic, Ty Terrazone. You are the inaugural Rugby Gold Cup champion. Just tell me a little bit about how that feels. Feels pretty good. I mean, as well, we came out to the Gold Cup and signed up for it to play a competition like this. Um, we're very proud about our guys. Um, came away with uh, an unblemished record in the Gold Cup uh, thus far. Um, but that puts us in the lead for it, and uh, really proud about that to accomplish our first goal of the season. Now we've got to look forward to the, uh, the national championship. Coach, for your squad, it's always about the national championship. You guys have played in it many times. You have yet to win it. Do you think this could be the year for your Blacks? Oh, that's the plan. Um, you know, last year was a big disappointment uh, to lose it the way we did in the last minute of the game. Um, but we learned from it, and we knew what we need to put right uh, for this season. So thus far, we've, uh, we've achieved what we want to. We just need to make sure we keep moving forward in the right direction. Coach, we saw a lot of great play from some youngsters. Wesley Teo, among them, got his first start in a Blacks kit today. What have you seen from the younger players this weekend? I mean, well, you know, this weekend, obviously we want to win it, but it's been a, a good chance to have a look at some younger guys and develop them and, and bring them along and create more depth uh, going forward into uh, the rest of the season. So I was very impressed with the effort of some of the young players. They did, they did themselves proud. The inaugural Rugby Gold Cup champions, the Austin Blacks, Captain Ty Terrazone, Head Coach Tane Jurisovic. Gentlemen, congratulations. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Right, thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Coach, thank you so much.